Beloved, I want to take a moment and talk to you about First Fruits Sunday. It's coming up on April 8th, and it's always a time for us historically to sow into what God wants to do to provide us the opportunity to let the Lord know we're giving him the first and the best as we move from resurrection, which is first fruits, into a whole new sacred year of anticipation for what God wants to bring to life in our personal lives, in our lives as a church, and in our lives in the community. We're all well familiar with the very first verse of the Bible where it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. What we may not be familiar with is that that word beginning is the word first fruits. It appears right in the first verse of the Bible. First fruits begins with beginning. And you could actually translate Genesis 1-1 as the first fruits. God created the heavens and the earth. Listen to that again. As the first fruits, God created the heavens and the earth. Creation the Holy Spirit wants us to know, is the prototype of first fruits. And when you begin to chase the rabbit of first fruits and connect the dots from Genesis 1 all the way to Christ as our first fruits and all the first fruits offerings that are prescribed in Scripture, it becomes a marvelous tapestry of God's intent and purpose for us in our journey together in Jesus. So creation is a prototype. And it's, in, it's a primary pattern. A prototype is archetypal. It's a primary pattern from which everything else happens. So God takes the first fruits and begins to parse them out. And he begins to, he begins to create realms from those first fruits. And he begins to create ruling things that can populate those realms. He takes three days to create realms and three days to furnish and adorn those realms. And in the first three days, there is a forming in the second three days, there's a filling. And in the seventh day, there's an enthroning. Well, what if I told you that every time we come before God with a votive offering, a vow, a first fruits vow, something is being formed that can be filled so that there can be a fresh enthronement of God's goodness in our lives. When you get to the story of Elisha, or the stories, I should say, of Elisha, there comes a moment in the famine because of what's happened with Ahab and Jezebel and how long their wickedness endured and the effects it had, not just in the days of Elijah, but also in the days of Elisha. Elisha comes with redemptive grace to people that have been in need of a visitation. And there comes a point where the man from Baal Shalisha comes with the bread of the first fruits. Normally, those portions of the bread of the first fruits were reserved for the priests and the Levites. But remember, the glory has departed. There's been Baal worship. And so what they do, since the northern kingdom is apostate, is they have to come south to where Elisha is and bring the first fruits to Elisha, who is a type of Christ. All of our giving goes to our heavenly Melchizedek, our first fruits himself. We need to remember that even when we go through the celebration of giving every Sunday, and we bring our gifts to the altar. We are actually giving them to the man in the glory. Our heavenly Melchizedek, our Elisha, Elijah, John the Baptist, passes the mantle to Elisha, Jesus. And Elisha, Jesus, our heavenly Elisha, our heavenly Melchizedek, receives the bread of the first fruits and then multiplies it so that it can feed the many. Well, beloved, every time we understand what the first fruits is, we can respond to it with a fresh appreciation for how come we celebrate first fruits. And so, first fruits always talks about new growth, and the new growth always belongs to God first. There's a law of first things throughout all of Scripture, and first fruits reminds us of that law of first things. Every week when we gather, we set aside the first portion of our giving, our 10%, plus an offering unto God as a mini celebration of the grand celebration of first fruits, which we do once a year. And it's all tied to Passover and to rebirth or resurrection because Jesus gets up on First Fruit Sunday. And so all of our hope is tied to Christ as our first fruits. 
And you can't go wrong giving Christ the first fruits offering because I promise you what you put in his hands gets multiplied again and again and again. Historically, first fruits has been an exciting time for us as a people. This year, we're believing God for about $200,000, which is about where we were last year. We'd like to see the house respond in generosity and liberality. And we want to take a portion of that money. If you've noticed as you've walked in, many of the tiles are chipping in the narthex and the hallways. And it's time for us to replace those floors. We have some work that has to be done on the roof that needs immediate attention. We don't want to use all the first fruits for repairs. We want to sow some of that into the future of the house. But we need to do that. Those are important things. We want to do house maintenance this year so that when people come they can see the excellence they can see that we care for the property that we're stewards over for the glory of God and so I want to encourage you and first fruits is a significant offering and I'm going to encourage as many as can think in terms of a thousand dollar first fruits or a five thousand dollar first fruits and those of you that can't come as close to that as possible but let's put our hearts together and let's remember as the first fruits, God created the heavens and the earth. So as the first fruits you present to him, there can be new creative release in your life, in your family's life, and in our life as the family of God. Let's do this. It's time. And let's do it cheerfully, honorably, and worshipfully to the one who is our first fruits, Jesus the Lord.